oh, I've had it brought to my attention that some of you aren't in classroom yet. So again, class code, class code, if, if you're not there, because if you need any of the notes that we have done so far in this unit, absent, other things going on where we didn't get the notes somehow, right on the mainstream. Here they come, they're pondering, there it is. Again, though, it has to be your writing in your packet to be able to use them. Because I do have people that have tried this before, believe it or not, they'll make the copy off the website, which is all mine, and then try to use it. And I'm like, not doing that. So those are there. If you still need a blank note packet, yours has been misplaced. I still have blanks back on the back desk. But for today, and I'm going to reference those things as much as I can while we're doing this. So let me move my notes out of the way. We're going to be chatting preview, and you know by now, with this being quiz number six, what you see on this preview, you're going to be seeing again tomorrow. So I may make a suggestion or two as I go through here, because I made the quiz, um, on some things you might want to pay special attention to. So, for instance, very first part, 3.1 evaluating functions. So I look, and I'm like, okay, ooh. I have examples that are just like this. Okay. So I'm looking at the very front of my notes here, and I see when these are here, all this is telling me is that that is the X value that I plug in. So I'm literally doing substitution. If I look at this one, I go, hey. So if some of you are still kind of looking around a bit, we're on 12 in the practice, and I'm just on the front of my notes. And so I literally just plug this number in the parentheses in for X and figure out the answer. I'm like, okay. So here, I'm going to plug the 4 in for X. And whether I'm comfortable doing that in my head or if I want a little bit of help, either one is fine. And I get my answer. Straight substitution, f of negative 3, exact same thing, except when I get to x, I'm going to plug in negative 3. And again, using your noggin, using the calculator, we don't care as long as we get to the answer. So part one is substitution. Excuse me while I... So I start looking even to this next one, and I'm like, okay, well, now what's going on? Now I've got this line here. I don't have X values to plug in. I see this here. How's this work? This is going to work. I'm just going to put this up for a second. Over on the notes... Basically, this is the x value that I go to, and then I follow it along that x value until I run into the graph. And whatever point that's at, I need to look for the y value. So I'm going to do that here. So it says g of 4. So here's 4. Again, that's my x value. And I follow it until I hit the line. Once I hit the line, I'm just going to follow it back until I see my g of x, or my y value. And that's all you're doing on this. So again, if I start at x equals 0, follow until I run into the line, whatever the y value is, that's the answer. Okay, so we've got it on the notes, but we also have it, <coughs> um, excuse me, in this way to be able to get that done. So I keep looking. I'm like, okay, let's see, 3.2. Is the following a function or not? All right, let's see here. What have we got here? We have got, oh, yeah. 
functions there they are so reminder here are my x values different that's really the only question that you have to ask to be able to know if this is going to be a function or not. So I look, and I'm like, okay, let's see. Because here, now that I've located it, here, here are my notes that kind of tell me the same thing. So I start looking at just the x values. Uh-oh. All my x values are not different, okay? Y4 repeats as an x value. And I need to put that last part in. I can't just say 4 repeats. Because if the y values were 4 and they repeated, it wouldn't matter. It would still be okay. But since they're both x's, I can't have that happen. And that really is all you got to pay attention to. You do not have to pay attention to the y's at all. Okay, and the next one, state the domain and range. So I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Let's see here. Domain and range. Domain looks like I'm just writing my x's. In range, I'm just writing my y's. So, okay. So there's my x's. Just write those down in order. So those are x, range is y. Get colors may come in handy here as well. So again, just listing them off. Function, we use the x values for domain and range. We're just listing off x and y. Nothing too bad. So I keep looking like, okay, this this might be that this might be doable. So then I look and I'm like, determine if the relation of the function. If it is not, show on the graph where the vertical line test fails. So I have examples of this too. This vertical line up and down. And so what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm looking to see if it goes through the graph more than once. That's going to be a no. Otherwise, it's good. So I look. And I'm like, okay. So if I start going through the first... Oh, oh. If I go through the vertical line and it goes through my graph in more than one place, that is not a function. I got to put no. But if I take my vertical line either just visually in my head or I'm going here and I'm like, well, I'll just randomly stop. Well, that's just one place. Okay, randomly stop. That's just one place. Randomly stop. That one's good. That one, I didn't find a place that I can go through twice with my little vertical line. And that's all we're doing on those. Even if it's just little points. You're like, I stop here. Still only one. And I keep going and I stop. Only one. And I stop. Uh-oh. That's two. That's a no. Ray. Thank you. So I get that. So that's basically, it's yes, no. But if it's no, you've got to show me why it's no or where it's no. But otherwise, it's not going to be anything that's that's too rough at, at all when it comes to that stuff. Okay, but we've still got the examples if we need them. Which is what we're going to keep coming back to. And back to. And back to. So I get to this next part. Okay, find the slope. I got help. So these are the ones where I've got to find where my graph is going through the little intersection points. So if I can find a couple, I don't have to find a ton of them, 
I might mark a couple of extras here because I see a couple. Got to be going through that intersection. But any of the ones that I've marked would work. And so once I get here, you can pick any pair. And we're going to be doing rise over run. We're doing our up or down first. So let's say I go, I'm going to do these two. I go up first. That's positive two. And then I go right. One, two, three. I've got my slope. I'm just going to make sure that's as simplified as it gets. Two divided by three. We don't do decimals. Math, enter, enter. It's still two thirds. If you're like, wait, what's that math, enter, enter thing again? That's how we make sure fractions are reduced and they're not decimals. So we got that in our notes to help us if we need it. And so as I do all of these, again, I keep looking. Oh, where's that intersection point at? There's one. Sometimes it may be tricky to find them because they get into some funky spots. So let's just say this time you're like, okay, I got these two points, but I want to start here. Do I have to start here? No, I can start it either. So I want to get myself equal or even lined up with this. So I went down one, two, three, four, five. I went down six. So it's negative. And I went right one, two, which is positive. Rise over run. But negative six divided by two is negative three. Reduce and simplify. Now, I mean, are you going to get some credit to what negative six over two? Yeah, you're going to get most of it, actually. I'm just going to be like, didn't reduce at the end. And then kind of see. Yes, sir. No. What did I do? Let's see, right, one negative one would be over here. Wait, no. negative one. Oh, right here? Yeah. Okay, now, good point. So I just had it mentioned to me that I could have used negative one, one here, which is true. So let's, let's do this to prove a point. So notice there, I used the two. They weren't the closest together, but I got to negative three. Let's say I use these two. And I say, okay, I'm going to go one, two. I went three up. And I went one left. Three divided by negative one. Yeah. It's still negative three. So what I'm saying here is, as long as your two points are somewhere on that line, they can be right next to each other, they can be far apart, I can still get to the same answer. So I appreciate you mentioning that, because I think that can be very helpful to somebody. You do not have to do both like we did there. It just kind of lets you see that either one is going to work. That is very cool. Okay. So the next piece of the pie here, I've got to find my special cases. There's my notes. Draw a line that has a slope of zero. I go looking through my notes. Ooh, special cases. Okay. Zero just means it's a horizontal line. So literally, all you have to do for A is draw a horizontal line. You're good. You're set. Love it. Draw a line that has an undefined slope. Vertical line. Put it in. That's it. But I've got it right here if I need it. Just saying. Just saying. When I get to the next part, find the slope between the points. I got my formula right here. 
notes, there's my formula. Subtract the y's over subtract the x's. I'm even going to put it here just in case. Except I got to do it the right way. And so if when I go to do these, label my x's and y's, I still would suggest doing that. It's why we put the it's why we put the colors out to help us out. Y's on top. Twelve minus two. X is on the bottom. X two minus X one. And just like we've done, if you can reduce the fraction. Put it in the calculator and check. But if you can, do so. We do not do decimals on these. Never, 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 ever, never, never. And so all we're doing on all three of these is continuing to label. Because that way, it literally is you're just substituting. But be careful. That minus is always there. And if your y1 happens to be a negative, that still needs to get there. Okay, that minus will not count for that negative. It doesn't work that way. x2 minus x1. If that makes you a little uncomfortable, you're like, hmm, 3 minus negative 4. Put it in the calculator. You don't get points off for doing it. Negative 5 minus 2. Put it in the calculator. So literally, label... And when we're done labeling, we're straight up copying. Even got the formula right above this time. Y2 minus Y1. X2 minus X1. Oh, here comes the moment of truth. Now again, I've got the calculator. Don't leave your fraction like this. Bless you. Zero divided by five is zero. If it was flipped the other way, let's just say for instance, I know it isn't on this one. If you get the error message, what do we call that? Undefined, okay? And you've got that in your notes too. It's there to help. If we get zero down there, again, why we wanna have the notes all set, just saying. Okay. Applications, we're getting there, people. We're almost there. Find the rate of change. Do not forget your labels. Okay, these do are separate problems. And I apologize that my, my graph did not come through here real well. So let's try and find the easiest ones to work with here. So we got 0, 0. Just looking back to see. There we go. All I need is two points. So once I find those two, I can do a couple of things. I can count. I can say, hey, I went up two, and I went right one. Rise over run. But then again, I've got to put my labels. Since it's y over x, it would be inches over hours. Two inches per hour. That's my rate of change. And any two points on the line would work as long as they're on the line. If I have a chart instead, I'm looking for my chart. 
looks like. Look into the chart. Look into the chart. So what happens when I take my pages apart and then I lose them? Well, what the heck? Wonder if I borrowed it to somebody. Okay, well, we're just gonna roll. So I get to this one when I'm on the chart. This is just me. Remember, these are like coordinate points. Just X and Y coordinate points, just like anything else. But I see decimals. I'm not really a big fan of decimals. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to use this one because I just don't want to deal with the decimals at all. So I'm going to call this Y1 and Y2. And I'm going to call this X1 and X2. And you could do them in either order. But now I've got any two. They can be next to each other, opposite ends of the chart. It makes no difference whatsoever. I will get the same answer. And so now I just do Y2 minus Y1. X2 minus X1. All whole numbers. Math work here. I can do 1 minus 0. So again, my labels, notice I did the X and Y up here. Y is on top. I see it in my formula. I see it here too. Y is feet. X is seconds. Negative 16 feet per second. That snow must be a melting or whatever it happens to be. But the idea is the same. It's still coming back to that same one. And down the stretch we come. Like Hardy, you went back to unit one again. And like I said, if you have notes from other units and sections we did, I don't mind if you bust them out. But again, let's just kind of see if we can work through this one. So here, first question. The little box in the corner, how many degrees is that? 90. So these two things added together equal 90. And I'm even going to keep saying this while I'm live doing a video. Folks, you are killing yourselves with your blasted phones. I can't save you from that stuff. I could sit and write emails home all day. But if you're not ready to take your education seriously and put everything into it, there's going to be choices and consequences thereof. That is all I will say on that topic. When I am putting my like terms together, though, notice they're all on the same side of the equals. I'm not going to like do opposites because they're together. But I do have to watch signs because that's 10 and that is minus 15 or negative 15. Now it looks a little more normal because now I just got to get my x by itself. Right? We got wildlife out in the hallways. I don't know what's going on here. And again, just keep doing my opposites and show me steps because if something goes haywire, let's say here you did minus five instead of plus five and got a different answer, but you plugged it into the right places and got the right things, you're still going to get credit for all that stuff. So please, 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 I beg of you, show me what you're doing. And so finally, I'm asked to find angle ABC so basically I'm just saying hey take this X plus 10 that's here and plug the X value in 
19 plus 10 and get your ankle. Nothing too terribly awful. Oh dear. Write an equation that helps solve for x. Find the measure of the angles. Okay. How many ang how many angles? How many degrees are there in a triangle? There, I'll spit it out. 180. So this plus this plus this equals this. So if you wanted to combine like terms right away, you could. I'm going to choose instead to literally write this out so you can see where I'm coming up with it from. You're like, oofta, that's a big old problem. But it's not going to be as bad as it seems. Because once I get here, again, all these x's are on the same side. We do not need to do opposites. Just add them up. All these constant terms. Twenty minus five is fifteen plus ten is twenty five. And now we're back into regular old equation solving mode. Because now trying to get x alone, I do have to do an opposite to move this to the other side of the equals. That's the change. And with these, I'll be honest, they should all come out to whole numbers. So even if you got to there and stopped, well done, you did several steps right, good job, but I want to know the measure of the angles. So my last job would be to just work my way around, and everywhere I see an X, plug it in. And I move to the next one. What happened? No, minus 15 to be 165. You can double check me. You can punch that in your calculator or use your noggin. Ooh, it's good to check on me. And I'm not saying you have to do this. But once you plug that 31 that you got in for each of your x's, if you really wanted to be sure that you've done it right, if you add your three angles up, they should equal 180. And if they do, I think you're in pretty good shape that it worked out okay. Just saying. All right, Jason's taking some guitar lessons. It costs 150 for the guitar, and each lesson costs 30. Okay, I'm going to verbalize this. So guitar plus lessons. There's a method to madness equals total. If I go through now and I do each part as I'm working, it costs 150 for my guitar. Got it. Each lesson, each means more than one, but we don't know how many more. So each lesson costs 30. I got to put an X with that. How many lessons could he take if he has a total of $350 to spend? I'm using the words to help me see where all the values go, and now I can go and make an equation. But here's the part that gets a little more interesting. I want to get x by itself. You're like, duh, Hardy. So I got to do the opposite of plus and 150. Nothing unusual so far. But here's where it gets interesting. 
my last step is to divide by 30. So let's see here, 200 divided by 30. You're like, well, x equals 6.7. But like, can you go take 7 tenths of a lesson? No. So I can't afford to go up because if I go up to 7, I'm spending more than I wanted to. So I'm going to have to spend a little less. I'll have a little money left over. But I can't go up to 7 because if I do, I'm over my limit. That's, again, one of those. If you put 6.7 or 7, it'd be a little tiny thing, but not a big deduction. Not a big one. Again, we're just kind of working on making sure that we don't forget some of these things. We're almost there, people. You've done well. RQ bisects PRS, which means these are the same. They are equal to each other. So I take my two angles and I set them equal. But unlike the last couple that we've done where we've added things together and then gone into equation solving mode here, my x's are on opposite sides of the equals, so I got to do opposites to get them together. Small change, but a change nonetheless. Do my opposite of minus and 20. And we just keep chugging along. The opposite of multiply is to divide. We're not asked to find each angle this time. We're just asked to find x, so we're going to stop. We're not going to keep rolling along if we don't have to. Almost there. I'm going to switch order here at the end. I'm going to go to number three. I'm going to come back to number two. All right, Caleb, bowling scores, 180, 162, 20. Not bad. What must Caleb score in his next game to average, to average a 200? So he's already gotten 180 and 160. In 220, what score does he need to get on his next game? We don't know. To average 200, he's bowled one, two, three. After his next game, four games. Oof, duh. Oops. 80 plus 160 plus 220 is 560 plus x for 4 is 200. And now we're into a regular equation situation. You're like, that don't look like no regular equation to me. I got to get rid of the fraction. We don't like those anyway. So we'll get that out of there. And then we'll just do our subtracting at the end because we're adding 560. We need to do the opposite. Oof, to Caleb better have his A game on if he wants to average 200. He needs a big one on this last one. So however the number of numbers are that you're using, including your X, that's the number you're going to divide by. That's the biggest thing to remember on that. Last thing. Find the value of x so the rectangles have the same area. Area is length times width. So what am I asking you? I want these two things to be equal. So I want 5 times x plus 4, length times width, to equal 6 times x minus 5, length times width. So I do have parentheses, so I got a little distributing to do.
And now I'm going to pull this back down a little bit. I'm back into the same situation that I was in the problem above. I've got variables on both sides. So I need to work on getting them together. And to do that, I've got to do an opposite. Since I want to get x alone, I do the opposite of what goes with x. Okay. So, I mean, we've got a little sprinkling of everything here. We may have to focus a little more in if you're doing some back study or thinking work on this last back page and a little bit on that other one because it's review stuff. But all the things before that you have got the notes for or the ability to get the notes for from Google Classroom. Again, your other unit notes are fully usable if you have them still, hopefully. Um, but otherwise, just kind of do your best, show as much work, and you should be in really good shape 